Hey guys and welcome to A level physics and chemistry. Today we will be covering the topic properties of radiation under AS level physics. This is the last installment in the radioactivity and particle physics series and this will round up the entire chapter and all the information you need will be in this playlist itself. Okay, let's get into it. So what are the properties we we'll look at? We we'll look at the ionizing power, the deflection in an electric field, the behavior in a magnetic field and the penetrating power of all three types of decay. That means we'll examine these properties for alpha particles, beta particles and gamma rays. So we first have to look at charge and mass. So charge and mass are one of the two inherent properties of all of these three particles and they will help determine how they behave in all of these situations. So Charge to mass ratio is an important quantity that we often use. So it is exactly what the name suggests. It's the ratio of the charge to the mass. For example, an alpha particle has a charge of plus two and a mass of four atomic units. So its charge to mass ratio is half. A beta particle on the other hand has a charge of minus one and negligible mass, giving a charge to mass ratio of virtually infinity. A gamma ray photon has no charge and no mass. Therefore, mathematically, the ratio is undefined. However, it is in real life, we take it to be zero. So the charge to mass ratio is an important quantity. It will be used to determine how each of these particles behave under different environments. So ionization. So what do you mean by ionization? Ionization is just the process by which an atom or a molecule acquires a negative or positive charge by the change in number of electrons. So even in your normal ionic reactions, if, an, if a chlorine atom gains an electron, it becomes a chlorine ion. And if um, a sodium atom gives away an electron and forms an A+, it also becomes an ion. So any charged atom is an ion. So all three of the radiation which we've gone through can result in ionization. This happens when they pass really close to other atoms present in the air and either absorb or give away the electrons they have and cause a polarization or a charge on the surrounding atoms. So this is the, this diagram is a very good representation. So we'll talk about alpha particles first. Alpha particles are the most ionizing out of all the three categories. This is because they're very heavy. So like they have the highest mass of four atomic units. So they'll be slowest passing through the air, even if they have the same energy because they have a higher mass and they also have the highest charge. Highest charge means easier to attract electrons from the air and slower, the more heavier they are, the slower they are, therefore more time to attract the electrons from the air. This makes the alpha particles most ionizing out of all three. As you would have probably guessed, beta particles are second most ionizing out of all three. This is because they have a lower absolute charge, that means Alpha particles have a charge of plus two, beta particles have a charge of minus one. So the charge on the alpha particles is essentially the mod modulus, that is two on the alpha and one on the beta. So because the beta particles have a lower charge, they have the less tendency to give away or attract electrons or knock out electrons from other atoms in the air, as well as because they have negligible mass, they pass very quickly. So it becomes very difficult for them to either attract or repel electrons out of the atoms in the air. Gamma rays, as you would have guessed by now, are least ionizing because they have almost no mass and no, no charge. Although they do have some ionizing property, it is almost negligible. So this is the order. Most ionizing, most ionizing to least ionizing is alpha, beta, gamma. Right, so we'll talk about radiation uh, deflection in an electric field. So you would have studied electric fields before. It just has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. And then the electric field is generated between these two poles. So here we have to talk about the charge to mass ratio again. Okay, so because the alpha particles are positively charged, they will be deflected towards the negative pole, right? Because opposites attract. The beta particles are negatively charged. Therefore, they will be attracted towards the positive pole because again, opposites attract. Gamma rays have no charge at all. So they pass right through undeviated. However, the degree of deviation is determined by the charge to mass ratio. 
So you can see in the diagram that the beta particles are deflected at a higher angle as compared to the alpha particles. How, so the alpha particles do have a higher absolute charge. That is, they have a plus two charge as compared to beta particles minus one. They have four atomic units of mass as compared to the beta particle, which is negligible. Therefore, because the alpha particle is much heavier, it requires a lot of force for it to even be deviated by a small angle. As compared to the beta particle, which has negligible mass, it is becomes, becomes very easy for it to be deflected. When you need to take into account both quantities, charge and mass, to determine the degree of deviation, we use the charge to mass ratio. Alpha particle has a charge to mass ratio of half, which is much less as than the beta particles, which have a charge to mass ratio of virtually infinity. That's why the beta particles have a greater angle of deviation. Right. So now we'll talk about the behavior of these three radiation in a magnetic field. So this video assumes that you know how to use the Fleming's left hand rule. In case you don't, I will soon be making a video on the types on electric fields and magnetic fields. You can check that out later. However, this diagram can help you through the thrust of motion or force is on the thumb. The magnetic field is on your first finger and the current is on your middle finger. Uh, do note that a current is the conventional current that is the direction of positive charge flow. So while we know that is essentially electrons flow, when we mark the conventional charge in most circuit diagrams, we take it to the flow of positive charge. So even here, the current is the flow of positive charge. Right, so let's take the diagram here. Again, you see alpha, beta, and gamma. And the X you see inside the circle marks that the magnetic field is going into the paper or into the surface in this region. Okay, so the easiest to see out of all the three is the gamma, gamma rays, which are uncharged, so they pass through undeviated and undeflected because they're completely unaffected by any magnetic field or electric field because they have no charge. When you use the Fleming's left hand rule in for alpha particles and you align it, you will see that the thrust of motion or force will act upwards towards the top of the surface when the magnetic field is aligned in, as shown in the diagram. So you see the alpha particles deviating upwards. Beta particles, because they're oppositely charged, will obviously have the deflection in the opposite direction as compared to alpha particles, which are positively charged. So the, the deflection of the beta particles is downwards or towards the bottom of the page. Again, the degree of deflection or the angle by which they're deflected is directly dependent on the charge to mass ratio. Alpha particles have a lower charge to mass ratio, hence lower angle of deflection. Beta particles have a higher charge to mass ratio, hence a higher angle of deflection. Right. Penetrating power. So what, what do we mean by penetrating power? Penetrating power is essentially the ability of the three types of radiation to pass through first air, which is less, which is the least dense uh, mediums, which is some of the lesser dense mediums we know, then through other mediums, such as um, paper, metals, and then finally lead, which is the hardest to pass through. So again, we talk about alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha particles are, because they are highly ionizing, they are least penetrating. Okay, these things are opposite. This is because once a charged beam loses its charge, it becomes less ion. It becomes less penetrating. So if because alpha particles are very highly charged and very highly ionizing, they will lose their charge very soon, as soon as they absorb two electrons from the air, and they will be stopped then and there, because now they are essentially neutral. Beta particles are more penetrating because, again, they are faster and have less charge, hence they are less ionizing. Gamma rays are the most penetrating, and this is a proven fact that cannot be absorbed completely. It is hypoth hypothesized that an infinite length of lead will would be needed to completely absorb all gamma rays. So it is virtually impossible, but about some thickness of lead will reduce it, reduce the uh, gamma ray to half its intensity. We know that much. This diagram is a good example. So alpha particles will usually be stored either by a few centimeters of air, or if you place one millimeter of paper, alpha particles will stop right, right then and there. And the beta ray, which is the second radiation 
it will pass through paper without much uh, problem but it will be stopped by aluminum in this case which is roughly 2 mm of aluminum or any other transition metal is good enough to stop a beta ray gamma rays on the other hand can virtually be can pass through paper aluminum and even lead it will it pick 2 cm of lead will reduce the intensity of the gamma ray but they are almost impossible to completely stop Right guys, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and I will soon be covering another topic. So this playlist for particle physics and radioactivity is complete and I will soon be taking up any other topic from the AS level syllabus. In case you want me to cover one specifically, you can let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, so you have all the videos you need for particle physics and radioactivity. I hope you like them. Any suggestions are welcome. And don't forget to send me your doubts on the mail that will be put in the description below. Thanks for watching.